Let's quickly go and understand the diagrams first. So let's make a pseudo NMOS NAND. We'll call it a two input NAND, two inputs. So for doing that, let's first make a static CMOS NAND. Very, very simple. We know how to make this A and B in series. If you don't remember the trick, the trick is write the expression, hide the bar, whatever is below the bar, that becomes your pull down. And complementary to your pull down is your pull up. So here A and B are in series, so your pull up, your PMOSs would be in parallel. So this becomes my static CMOS NAND, two inputs. While making pseudo, what you have to do is take the pull down network here, which is exactly the same. So under the bar, whatever it is, the same expression will come for the pull down A and B. V out, ground. And your pull up would be nothing but just one PMOS, which has its input grounded. So what we are trying to do is, we are trying to reduce our dependencies on PMOS and ensuring that with only one PMOS, which is always on trying to achieve the functionality. Obviously it has its own drawbacks, but currently the advantage is for a static CMOS NAND, if it was a two input, we needed totally four transistors, whereas in zero NMOS, it will need three transistors. If I had of say five input NAND, then how many? five for your pull down, five for your pull up, so total of 10. Here it would be five for your pull down and one for your pull up, so total is six. So this is for N input, this would be how much for static CMOS? N cross N, we saw that. Is it correct, N cross N or N plus N? Everyone? Yeah, it's N plus N, so I'm sorry. It's N plus N. Here it's always going to be n plus 1. So we save on considerable amount of area when we study zero and more circuits. We'll see its drawback in a minute and we'll see whether it's behaving like an AND or an inverter. First let's complete a zero and more snore as well. Let's quickly start zero and more snore. Before that a CMOS snore. The trick was very very simple CMOS snore static. Remember CMOS static snore. We, write, we wrote an expression y equal to a plus b the whole bar. Whatever is below the expression, hide the, uh, sorry, whatever is below the inversion, hide the inversion. Whatever is below the inversion is nothing but my pull down, a plus b. This was static. Similarly, for zero also, the pull down is going to be exactly the same. a in parallel to b. This is my pull down. Pull up here is nothing but in static, it's exactly complementary to what is there in the pull down. So here they were in series or in parallel, they were in parallel. So the pull up would be in series. A, B, V out. Here only one pull up, that is nothing but a PMOS transistor whose input is grounded and this will be nothing but my V out. Now if you see here, we have already discussed that PMOS being slower and series being further slow. So there are two PMOSes, so this will make NOR very very slow. In this case, only one PMOS who is always on and is grounded. So it's comparatively occupying less area. Why less area? Because if we want to make this slow fast as comparable to NMOS, we need to increase the W by L. Don't need to get confused. We have already discussed this in the concept of symmetric inverters whenever any transistor is slow and if you want to make it fast how to make a slow transistor fast increase w by l is it logical yes because id is proportional to w by l so if w by l is increased my id will increase if current flow is increased then my transistor becomes fast so this is nothing but the w by l of this has to be increased tremendously which will cost a lot of area whereas here it will be less area because there is only one pmos now let's understand whether the functionality is achieved in zero NAND, NOR and inverter. If we understand inverter, the other two are self-explanatory and then we'll see the drawbacks of zero circuits.